Hello and welcome to the Wendell Effect. My name is Brandon Wendell and I'll be guiding you through my view of the uh, futures index in at the uh, index futures, <laughs> equity index futures specifically. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Before we do, just need to remind you, we're just doing this from an educational standpoint. I'm not telling you to buy, so hold any particular securities, giving any personalized information or recommendations. And we are uh, uh, past performance, no indication of future results. There's always risk of loss in the markets. It's always a situation, no matter what we do, we can't eliminate the risk. We just try to minimize it. And we're not subject to trading restrictions, so we can have a position at security initiate one at any time. Stay in touch with me, please. If you've got any requests or got anything uh, you'd like me to talk about, please email me, brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. You can also hit me up at TraderBDub. And uh, if you would, please hit like and subscribe and get the alerts as well to let you know when new videos come out on a regular basis. So look forward to hearing from you, and we will jump right into the information now. So taking a look at the equity index futures, as I was trying to say earlier, for the week of April 9th. I'm going to kick it off looking at the ES. And if you've been a little bit um, troubled or struggling to figure out what's going on in this market and maybe struggling to even trade this market, you're not alone. I mean, take a look at what's going on here with the weekly trend. We had clear bullish trend, clear bearish trend. Now we're consolidating and things are choppy. So it's a little more challenging to take trades, especially on the longer time frames when you don't have a clear trend to trade. So you got to reduce your time frames and reduce your risk, either with what you trade going to smaller size or micros, or again, the size is also another way of reducing risk, and time. Going to smaller time frames reduces risk. So anyway, you go down to the smaller time frame here, you see on the daily chart, we are trying to break out of our range that we've been in. You see that range back and forth, and we're making a run for the upper part of the range. The momentum is strong enough to get us above that with a little pause, but we failed before. So kind of keeping an eye on that right now to see, do we have enough momentum to actually continue? If we do pull back, we do have 4,000 right around there as the origin of good rally or buying pressure that could carry us forward if we get a pullback. That's about a 50% retracement of the most recent rally anyway. But um, again, we're stuck in a little bit of supply and pulling just sideways, not really retreating even. Going down to the four hour time frame, you see we did pull back a bit on Friday, actually even before that, several days before, and then did a little bounce, sorry, on Thursday because we had the holiday last week. But we did bounce off this demand and stayed above 40, and that generally leads to new highs being made. Uh, we do have a challenge with 4,200 because there is origin of selling pressure there. And, you know, we may just stall out like we did before. Look to see if you get divergence like this. If there's divergence where prices make higher highs, but the indicator makes the same or lower highs, that's when you turn back down or turn back up as well if you get that warning sign on the bottoms. So as of right now, it looks as though we're going to start off the week a little bit bullish, try to push back up and get up to that 4200 before pulling back just a little bit. Now the leading mark is the one we really want to watch. Oops, sorry about that. Jumped around here a little bit. There we go. And if you take a look at all four of the equity index markets together, you can clearly see from our, our rally point back on March 13th, the NASDAQ is the leader. And that's going to tell us when the bullish trend is over. The leader will usually let you know. And you see the Russell is dying to go to the downside. It's much, much weaker. And will probably lead when we do start turning downwards. So uh, taking a look at the NASDAQ on the weekly chart, the reason why we're stalling out is we're at weekly supply. So as you can see, we did poke a little bit above 60 on the RSI. That suggests that the supply zone is going to be challenged and could push through, but not before we pull back first. So I'd expect a bit of a pullback, uh, not necessarily below this 12,000 area. That's where the origin of the buying pressure is. And we should try to reach up and test 15,000 once we get through that. But we could see, again, if the momentum turns and we get more bearish momentum, it could go down and test the 11,182 demand before we try to bounce once more. Uh, taking a look at smaller time frame here on the daily, you see that when we did our pullbacks and bounce, we did it in bullish territory. We didn't have enough bearish momentum to change trend at all. And we are moving up and see we're well above 60 as we're coming close to the demand. Typically, when you get this price action where you pull back before you hit demand zones, it's price trying to build momentum to break through. So again, that's hinting at a push upwards for this week. Going down into the four-hour chart, really, we had a divergence here. Now what the key thing is going to be is whether or not we put in a peak either above or below 60 on the RSI. 
if we put in a peak, which we haven't done yet, you know, this could keep going higher. But if we put in a peak below 60, it confirms a trend reversal, believe it or not. And I would expect the market to start dropping and we can easily drop down to 12,400 uh, 12, even lower. Again, we'll look for the Russell to lead us down and where we're going to bounce. But if we end up not making a peak here and pushing up above 60 on the RSI, price continues. So keep an eye out for that. Remember, this is the leading market and will tell us when we're topping out and getting ready to turn down. So this is critical to watch. On the Dow, not a whole lot going on there. You see, we did pull back. We retraced 50% of our most recent move. We are pretty much just sideways in trend. We can't get above 60 or below 40, so not much momentum there. And it does look as though price wants to continue a bit higher, but it's very weak as it's trying to. We stalled out at this little daily supply, as you can see. But we do have a lot of bullish momentum, suggesting prices do want to go higher. It will just follow whatever goes on with the NASDAQ for the most part. And down on the four hour time frame, we really lost momentum. So looking at it kind of through microscope here with price, we stalled at both the projection and supply and are just stalling, waiting for the other markets to drag price either up or down. So again, this is not the decision making index. It's going to follow what everything else does. So looking at our leader to the downside, the Russell on the weekly, you see how much weaker it is because the NASDAQ was pushing up towards supply while the Russell is just bouncing back and forth in this range. And we really have a lack of momentum. So this is being pulled up by the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ gives up, we'll get a free fall here. And looking at the daily chart, you see much weaker than the other indices. We dropped, we're basing. It looks as though price wants to continue down, but we lost our bearish momentum. There's a positive divergence where prices made lower lows, but the indicators made higher lows. So we're just kind of stalling and waiting again. If the NASDAQ declines, this will be the fastest market moving down and the best shorting opportunities. And looking at the four hour time frame, we get a little bit of bullish activity as we're trying to put in a low. It hasn't done so yet, but it's trying to put in a bottom here with the RSI above 40. So still not enough to really get excited and go long, but it could get pulled up a little bit again by the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ uh, kind of stumbles, then expect us to start dropping. We'll just uh, pause for a little bit, probably at this uh, 1720 before continuing down towards basically the bottom of the range. And below that bottom of the range is really nothing to hold us up until we reach about 1100. So if the markets start becoming bearish, you could take a ride on the short side with the Russell down towards that 1100 on the index. And that'll tell you where we're going to bottom out when we see some strength coming into the index, uh, the Russell index. So that's what I saw this week on the uh, indexes, the equity indexes. Again, if you want to stay in touch with me, make any requests, you can hit me up, brandonwindell.cmt at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter, at TraderBW, where I tweet pretty much every day about these indexes and markets. And of course, if you could, please hit like, subscribe, and alerts to make sure you're notified for new videos that come out. Until next time, everyone, trade safe, trade well, and thank you for watching.